guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about the High Wizard class and the most useful strategies to increase damage and Zenny income. High Wizards excel in farming Zenny and materials due to the high damage single target and area of effect skills. In this guide, I'll discuss the most important stats, skills, runes, equipment, enchantment, card, pets, leveling tips, and farming spots. Since I'll be covering a lot of essential topics, I'll be splitting up this guide into three videos. In this first video, we'll tackle the recommended stats and how to allot skill points from the early game to the late game. We'll also touch into the recommended runes and guild blessings. In the next episode, we'll go into detail and discuss all the various equipment, cards, enchantments, and pets that are suitable for high wizards. And in my final video for this series, we'll focus on leveling tips and farming spots from level 10 to level 99. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notified with each episode. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, we'll start with a stat build. The two most important stats for high wizards are intelligence and dexterity. Intelligence is a primary stat that increases magic attack. Every one point of int gives 1.5 magic attack. At the beginning, you will pump up int until it reaches 99 as you need high magic damage to farm efficiently. The second most important stat is Dexterity as it increases cast speed. Every 30 points of Dexterity reduces cast time by 1 second. You only need to increase Dexterity once Int is at 99 since most of the spells you will use for farming at the early stages don't have long cast times. At level 99, you will have the following base stats, 99 Int and 99 Dex. Next, let's discuss how to allocate skill points. When starting out as a mage, you need to get Soul Strike up to level 5, as this will be your primary skill for farming as a mage. The advantage of using Soul Strike over other damaging spells is that it has faster cast time and deals decent damage. After that, level up the passive skill Increase Spiritual Recovery to increase your SP while farming with Soul Strike. Then increase the level of Fireball to level 5 in order to open up Ring of Fire. Even though Firebolt has a slow cast time, there will be certain situations wherein Firebolt will be helpful, such as if the monsters are weak against a fire element. Afterwards, max out Ring of Fire to level 10. Using this skill summons a Ring of Fire around you which prevents monsters from attacking you. As such, this is a very good defensive skill against melee mobs. Next, go back to Soul Strike and max it out to level 10 for higher damage. As for the remaining 5 points, you can allot 3 points on Cold Bolt and the remaining 2 points on Lightning Bolt. But for PvP, I suggest getting Frost Driver to level 5 for a 50% chance of freezing targets. When you become a wizard, you will rely heavily on a single target skill Magic Crasher instead of Soul Strike or Bolts for farming. Max this out immediately to increase damage. Afterwards, level up Heaven's Drive to level 1 only for faster cast time. This Earth Element AoE skill proves very useful against monsters of the Wind Element such as the Hornet. There are areas in the Molly Mountains where the Hornets spawn close together such as here and here, so you can spam Heaven's Drive. However, these spots are almost always occupied by other players so you'll find yourself competing for loots and EXP. Then get Soul Drain to level 10 as this increases your max SP by 20% and lets you recover SP when getting a kill using single target skills like Magic Crasher. Next, allocate 5 skill points on Energy Coat. This is a great defensive skill for wizards as it decreases physical damage received. In addition, it also increases magic damage by 10%. After that, get Stormgust to level 1 only since increasing its level also increases its cast time. In addition, Stormgust level 1 has the highest chance to freeze targets. This water element skill is mostly utilized for crowd control since it can push back and freeze mobs in rifts, boss hunt, and endless tower. Next, level up Jupiter Thunder to level 5. This wind element single target skill can kill off squishy enemies in PvP after you have frozen them with Frost Driver. However, take note that the pushback effect is disabled in PvP. Then max out Lord of Vermilion to level 10 since higher levels have faster cast time and greater damage. You will also use this skill when doing rifts, boss hunt, and endless tower. 
For the remaining three skill points, you can allocate one point on site as this helps reveal hiding assassins in PvP. Then put two skill points on Fireball. Once you've changed to a High Wizard, start leveling up Amplify Magic Power to level 10. This skill gives a 30 second buff on the magic damage of your skills. Then get at least level 6 Napalm Vulcan for farming Agira in Pion Cave. However, if your magic attack is not enough to one-hit Agira with level 6 Napalm Vulcan, you can increase its level for higher magic damage. Take note that using level 7 or higher Napalm Vulcan will also increase the SP cost of this skill, so make sure you can sustain SP while farming. Next, go back and max out the High Wizard skill Fireball to level 10 since this will be very useful when farming Earth Element monsters like the Orc Archer and Orc Wire. Again, just take note that higher level skills will consume more SP. Next, at this point, allocating the rest of the skill points will be up to you as this will be dependent on your playstyle. You should also be getting the runes for Meteor Storm as this is a very good farming skill. We'll discuss more about this once we go to runes. At this point, it's best to use your skill Reset Rod and remove points from skills that are no longer needed at higher levels, such as the Soul Strike and Napalm Vulcan. As a guide, I recommend resetting your skills to the following. For the Mage skills, get level 10 Increased Spiritual Recovery, level 10 Fire Bolt, level 10 Cold Bolt, level 5 Ring of Fire, and level 10 Frost Diver. Choose level 10 Frost Diver if you want to utilize it for PvP. However, if you'd prefer a stronger Ring of Fire, you may switch points between Frost Driver and Ring of Fire. As for the Wizard skills, you can remove points from the Fireball as by now you may already be using Meteor Storm. You may reallocate the points instead to Jupiter Thunder for single target wind damage. You can now have level 10 Magic Crasher, level 1 Sight, level 10 Soul Drain, level 5 Energy Coat, level 1 Storm Gust, level 1 Heaven's Drive, level 10 Lord of Vermilion, and level 10 Jupiter Thunder. For the High Wizard skills, you can remove all points from Napalm Vulcan as this skill only finds utility when farming Agira. You may get Stone Curse to level 5. This will give a 40% chance of applying the Stone Curse effect to a targeted area for 60 seconds. This is a useful crowd control skill for stunning the summoned mobs of boss monsters. Then allot 5 points on Safety Wall which is a defensive skill against melee physical damage. This skill can save you and your party mates during boss hunts and PvP. Do take note that you will still get damage from ranged physical and magical damage. Finally, max out Marsh Pond to level 10 which slows down enemies in a targeted area. Similar to Stone Curse, this works great as a crowd control skill when MVP summon mobs. For the remaining two skill points, you can put it on Stone Curse for increased chance of applying the Stone Curse effect. At job level 40, you will have the following. Level 10 Amplify Magic Power, Level 5 Safety Fall, Level 10 Marsh Pond, and Level 7 Stone Curse. Once you have reached the maximum job level, you can unlock the Job Breakthrough quest to extend your job level from 40 to 70. If you haven't seen my Job Breakthrough guide, I'll have it linked down below. For the allocation of the additional skill points, it will be up to you as it is based on personal preference. If you want to farm Anolia and a Glassheim Culvert, prioritize getting Lord of Vermilion to level 20 to kill them off in one tick. However, keep in mind that it will consume a lot of SP. If you're going to use Meteor Storm for farming, you can place the first 5 points in Energy Code for consistent increased damage. Then allocate the next 10 points in Amplify Magic Power for increased elemental damage. Take note that the element which gains increased damage from using the skill is random, so there's only a 25% chance that it goes to fire. After getting LOV, Energy Coat, and Amplify Magic Power to their max levels, allocate the leftover 5 points on Marsh Pond. Alright, before I proceed to the runes, remember that the previous skill recommendation is only a guide, and it's still up to you which you would prefer for your character. Builds may vary from player to player as it largely depends on your playstyle and personal preference. Now let's jump into runes. The most common path I take is the Meteor Storm and Fire Pillar runes due to the large area of effect and high damage with the right set of equipment. 
Looking at our ruins, we can find a set of Meteor Storm ruins at the upper right area. On the left, we have the set of Fire Pillar ruins. Check out my Meteor Storm rune video to find out the two alternative pathways to get Meteor Storm. One will require more gold medals and less contribution, while the other more contribution but less gold medals. Upon completing those, focus on runes that increase fire attack to increase your fire damage. Here are the fire damage runes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You may also go for wind runes for more LOV damage. Here are the wind damage runes. We have 1 and 2. Also, go after runes which increase magic attack. Of course, there are a lot of other specialty runes to explore such as the Invincible Space which increases the range for the next AoE skill and Gravitational Field which deals constant natural damage around you. However, these find more utility in PvP thus I'll discuss them and the other runes in more detail in a separate video. For now, the recommended path is to take the MS runes. For Guild Blessing, take the Wise Blessing as this will give extra magic attack. Alright, so far we discussed the stats, skills, runes, and guild buffs. I hope this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation build and progression of skills for your high wizard. In my next video, I'll go into detail and discuss all the various equipment, cards, enchantments, and pets that are suitable for wizards and high wizards. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.